finds out the Lord, for he is dead and his mercy and endure forever. Now, this is the day that the Lord has made. We are here to rejoice and be glad in him. Good morning to one and all, and welcome back to another Sunday morning worship here at Tabernacle. I'm sure to be able to have you each and every one of you with us this morning. And we pray and we hope we can have to be the Lord this morning to tell you who we are going to see you. Once again, we are all supported by Facebook. We are streaming live from Freeport.
song was long time to do the rock. If you didn't want the rock to answer any more rock, it's like, I don't know, 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 I don't know.
sides of a man named Abraham, three sides of a man named Abraham. As it relates to our lives, every one of us should wear many different hats. I am sure there are those of us here today who have multiple, probably, uh, skills. For instance, I am a husband, a father, a son, a brother, a pastor, a friend, among many other things. This passage reveals the three sides of the life of this man named Abraham. If you've read the book of Genesis, you would have seen this and you would see this. In this passage, we read this morning, we were visited by the Lord during this visit. We are given a glimpse of his three sides. As Abraham is revealed to us, here we see some characteristics in his life that may reflect in ours also. There was a personal encounter between the Lord and Abraham that exposes to these three sides. As we examine Abraham's three sides, we must also examine our lives also to determine whether or not we are made of the same fabric as was Abraham, and I'm sure we are. And so this morning, I would pray that your hearts would be blessed as we look into these, or this, to the, the three sides, to suggest the scriptures here of this man called Abraham. Let us pray. Father, once more again we bow before you and we give you thanks, we give you a lot of praise, we give you honor to God for all that God has done for us and for that which you will continue to do. And we pray God for your leadership and for your directions this day. I pray God for each one who are here with us, those who are following us, God for social media. Lord, may you be glorified this day. May the message be an uplifting one. Father, thereby at the end of the service, we can all say thank you, God, for your blessing on me, for your goodness and for your grace. Now, Lord, may you open my eyes that I may see a cloud, that I have an understanding, that I, my Father, may discern. Now, God, and my Father, loosen my stomach tongue, that I may be a blessing unto those who are under the sound of my voice. This is my prayer in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Look at verse number 18 first. And in this verse, we see here Abraham the servant. It says, saying that Abraham should surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Go to verse 1 and 3. No, verse 1 to 3. And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and, uh, and he sat. In the tent door and in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked and lo, three men stood by him. And then he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door, and bowed himself toward the ground and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away. I pray thee from thy servant. So who are these visitors, visitors that brought him on Abraham? According to the word of God, it says that these were angels. But then in verse number one says, and the Lord. And that is the capital L-O-R-D. Indicating that that was none other than the Son of God. One of these beings, as I said, is none other than Jesus Christ. Abraham recognized the heavenly origin of his guest because he responded in such a fashion. And he was quick in action. He was not riding his feet. He reacted, I mean, promptly. Uh, you and I do not know who we are entertaining at times. Uh, I, I like to do split thing in two sets. You know, sometimes we, people come around us and and we don't feel it being bothered, and, and, and you kind of want you know, to be a little bit uh, snappy. You don't want to, you know, you want to get rid of them. But here with Abraham, when he grew 13 and two says, 
be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Now, when we think of angels, when we think of angels, we think of a, of a main person. But this is not what the scripture is talking about. You can be an angel of the Lord, an angel of mercy. You see, God uses you, God uses me, God uses different people. And this is what it's talking about. So when we do, God is looking for the same servant of Aaron, Aaron and Abraham to be as in you and me. So God has these three aspects of the servant of Aaron. When you see the three sides of Abraham, Abraham was a now in the Middle East we would look at him as a a wealthy person or, or something to work with sheep. I mean, and he would be um, a sultan. He would be, I mean, he, he is very wealthy. But he, he did not allow his wealth to stand between him and a servant. Here is what verse number 1 to 6 says. And the Lord appeared unto him in the flames of memory, and he sat in the set door in the heat of the day, and he lifted up his eyes and looked at those there, and looked, uh, uh, and look, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground and said, My Lord, if now I found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant, let a little water, I pray you, be fetched and wash your feet. Now, this is Abraham, this is the, uh, the host never do this. The host, the servants of the host does this for his visitors. But here Abraham is doing this himself. This is the action, the attitude of the servant. A little more, I pray thee, be fetched and wash your feet and rest yourself under the tree. And I will fetch, again, notice the word here again, personal pronoun, I. Abraham is doing it himself. The fetch is also a breath and, uh, and, and comfort your heart after that he shall pass on. For therefore are you come to your servant. See, again, he, he referred to himself as the servant. And they said, So do as thou hast said. And Abraham hastened unto the tent, unto, unto Sarah, and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fire, kneel near, and make cakes upon the earth. So here we see, number one, the willingness to serve. To be a servant, you must be willing. You should not be forced into it. I remember some years ago, there was a uh, man here in the church, and, and he was asked to assist in taking uh, an ushering. And he said, Me, he said, I'm a preacher. You know, you know, you know, you know, after me, uh, who the service of an usher. Even if he, he literally made that statement, he refused to. Uh, to demonstrate a servant heart. I believe every child of God ought to be willing to be a servant. We are servants of God. And I've, been, I, I've done a lot of traveling over the world, around the world. I've been, I've been invited to many different church seminars. And, and, I, and, I, and as I got there, the people did not know me. I didn't know them. But the fact that I was uh, on the list as, as, as one of the visiting pastors, and, and they need me to do things, I was see a mere name badge. And when you hear them, uh, they say, Oh, come on. Uh, Pastor, what's that? You come and you do this over here. And Pastor Dave, I want you to do this over here. You know, we never question what, what they. Now, not only us done that now, but many other men who were there were identified to do menial things. And we didn't get them. But the day, being a, a, a doctor of divinity, he didn't get them to say, I don't know, who ties in nothing to do with this. I didn't get to say that I said, I am Pastor Woodside, I should not be doing it. No! Once you are, 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 are asked to do something for God, you are to be willing to do it. Abraham sprung into action quickly, trying to supply every need of his heavenly visitors. This ought to be the heart of every child of God. You see, uh, Abraham was approximately 100 years old, but there was no pick up in his step. I mean, he just jumped into action. Uh, I don't know what he was taking. I don't know what kind of he was on. But boy, he was willing to serve. He had the energy. Here is a man who recognized his duty and set about to do it as quick as possible. Or sometimes he questioned and wondered if I should do this. Listen, you're not, we are not serving men. We 
you are serving God. Yes, you are serving man in a sense, but he, but I'm, our number one service is to God first. May I just remind you that the Lord deserves the best of our service. If you are serving him regardless of how many of the cast may be, or should look, or may look in the eyes of others, we should do our best knowing who we are serving, and we should seek to do the best possible job to the glory and honor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The book of Colossians chapter 3, let's read verse number 23 to 24. Hear what it says. Uh, Whatsoever ye do, do it heartily. That word happened to me, willingly. Do it heartily as to the Lord. Not to the church, not to the pastor, or to whoever are in charge. He says, and says, not unto men. Verse 24. Knowing that of the Lord he shall receive the reward of the inheritance. For he served the Lord Christ. And so, every one of us, we are servants of God. Once you are born again, you become a servant of God. Now you really deserve. There are people who are servants and they try to duck work. I used to be like that. I remember when I came out of high school. My first job was working for the U.S. government. And uh, they put me on a boat. And I used to sail up and down the coast of Andrews because you know they, 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 they patrol that area. And uh, being on board that boat with the people, probably but maybe all the trust is not this building and one has to try to find a place to have to hide. I was only seven, eight, eighteen years old. I mean that was an excuse, but I just you. But you know, I want but I want I want I want my faith when they came. I want to get paid for how many hours I was on that boat. But I tried to tell you, sometimes when the captain or whoever, the, the, the person is in charge of the crew, find me, he said, uh -huh, uh, I just think you look up and where you were. But I always had a story. You know, the young people sitting back today. I was at, you know, I mean, the story wasn't a true story either. I was doing something, you know, but not. Or the U.S. government, I was doing something for half this. He said, I was ducking work. And that's what a lot of Christians still do in the day, ducking God's work. Just because of, of a, you, 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 you don't feel up to it. He said, and whatsoever you do, do it hardly as to the Lord, but not as the man. You're not doing it for the praises of man, so People may never recognize the, 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 the work that you do, ever. But one day, I like, I, I, I like the verse number 24 says, knowing that the Lord, he, uh, know, know that of the Lord he shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. That's how you should serve, I deserve. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 67 says, No, but I serve as a man pleaser. But as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God, how? From the heart. That's how we do the will of God. You see? With good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to man. So, it is what is worth doing. Someone says, worth doing right or doing well. Secondly, the quality of the service. Make sure that your service has quality. When you, when you serve the Lord, look at verse 7 through 8 of our text. Genesis 18, verse 7 through 8. And Abraham ran unto the herd and fetched a calf tender and good and gave it unto the young man and he hastened to dress it. And he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree and they did eat. <clears throat> Years ago, I was in San Domingo, and uh, after I think it was the middle of the week, one of the host pastors invited us to his home uh, for for lunch. He was 
was seemed to be a, a very wealthy man. He had servants. I mean, now uh, I don't know who did items for that day, but according to the spread that he had there, with a whole yard and everything, I mean, it was a beautiful surrounding. And his servants were all there. They didn't have to do that. One family, one family, one family, one family, one family there. Once everything was prepared, everything was set, those servants then took their position and they just stood there doing nothing else but just observing. When the bread was finished, he looked one run and more bread was on the table. When the soup was finished, more men and more soup. I mean, they were not asked to do anything. They were, they were already briefed by their master what they wanted to do. And so they knew how to keep everything supplied. So this is what Abraham was doing. Abraham, it says, and Abraham ran with a herd of fetch, a cow, and a good, and gave it to, uh, and good, and, and gave it unto the young man, and he hastened to dress it. But here what verse number 8 says, and he took butter and milk and the cow which he had dressed and set it before them. This is what uh, the key is right here. And he stood by them under the tree. Abraham just stood like this. And he's watching. Then the bread is low. Sarah! And yes, Sarah, they will do. More bread! When the lamb chop went low, he said, Sarah, more lamb chop. He made sure that the supplies were there. And that's the servant's job, you see. Do the best that you can. With however little it might be. Lucy Campbell, an American composer of the song, when I have given the best of my service. When she wrote that song, she, uh, as, uh, I don't have a chance to go into her biography, but being a young girl, her father used to work for the Railroad uh, Track of America. And she would, uh, her mom was pregnant <coughs> with her. And her mom gave birth to her on the train because she, she took in there. And so she had to give birth to, to, uh, to Lucy, uh, a slave, <coughs> the daughter of a slave. You see. But as she grew up, and she, um, she had a sister who also was a, uh, um, um, a musician. She wanted to be such. But she was not afforded because her father ended up dying in an accident while she was on the job where, when she was young. But you know, things just did not work out all the way the way he wanted to work, and things did not work out well for her. But at the end of the day, she sat down one day and she penned these words. If then you have given the best of your service, telling the world that the saving is come, be not dismayed when men don't believe you. He'll understand and say, well done. So you're not doing what you do to help. Yes, we'd be like to get a little part of the show with people every now and again. But the major reason is to hear it from him. From God, from the Lord, you see. No one was Abraham served in his service to the Lord, but he was also sacrificial. He did not give one of his sick man. He did not give one of the lamb that had a little infection or had a little flea or take on a no. He went and he got the best. Sometimes you want to give what you can afford. You want to give what you can spare. Jesus said, you see this, everyone sitting by, a man that the widow walked by the treasury, and she threw in her little mite, something like that. That ain't no use. Don't get by that. Jesus called to the text of his disciples, and you see that little widow right there? You see that man over there? He just threw in a hundred thousand dollars. That man just threw in two hundred thousand dollars. She went over there, she threw in two months. Not even a full penny. She gave more than all of them. And I can hear the question in the heart of the disciples. But you didn't say that she gave more. She only gave two months. Where's the rationale? Jesus then explained. They give up their abundance. They give what they could have spared. What they could have bought. And 
said, I more left. This is the all of you that. That's the best of the sins. When you give in yourself. So, thirdly, the quietness of the sins. And verse 8, and he took one of the milk, the calf which he had dressed, and set it before them, and he stood by them under the tree, and they did eat. While the visitors were eating, the being Abraham stood quietly. He simply stood beside them, taking the post of the servant, the position of the servant. Imagine the reaction of Abraham's servant as they saw their master doing what they supposed to be doing. Look up for the book of Acts. Mm. It says that the apostles were busy visiting widows and serving tables. God said to the apostles, listen, Paul, through the whole of Paul, he said, this is what you are doing, it's not your job. Your job is to study the word of God. Your job is to pray. Your job is to teach and preach the word of God. Then I gave positions and places to the people. Let them get involved. Let them take care of the word. Let them be the ones who go and visit the sick. Let them be the ones who go and feed the poor. Get your nose in the word of God. Get your neighbors and houses on your knees. Pray. Serve God in that capacity whereby you can be equipped to edify them, to help them, to deliver. But if you are not spending time in the word of God, then you are not going to be equipped. So, when you are given the best of your service, Abraham gave the best of his service as a servant. Number two, Abraham was a sinner. To be a good servant, you need to be a good sinner. You know when you listen to the Catholic, you be sent, uh, sent that you got to die. Or you got to do some great service. But every born of each child of God is a saint. The moment you trust Christ as your Lord and Savior, you become a saint. Abraham referred to himself as a saint. Abraham was very much alive. But looking at verse number 9, <clears throat> it, uh, Genesis 18, verse 9 through 12. And they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return. This is the angel of the Lord's voice speaking now, unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. Sarah heard it, and she turned off with the kind in. And Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age, and they ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of a woman. Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I was once old, shall I occasion my Lord being old also? And this is he said, I am old, and my husband is old. But by then, this thing got what? Oh, yes. She said, Is that what you mean? That should be our pleasure now that we are old? I am old, and my Lord, being old also, she, when you see called your husband, now that's a small error, Lord also. And so she said, My Lord is old. This can't work. God rewards the faithful service that render to him. When you render the Lord God what was the miracle in your life, in Abraham's case, he does this by reassuring Abraham regarding the birth of his son Isaac. In verse number 18 to 19, if you read it, you will find that Abraham was given the promises of God. In verse 9 to 15, and they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. As the saint, God promised Abraham a child. I wonder if you ask God, if you ask God for anything, he'll be with you. I wonder if you trust in his word. Verse 10 said, and he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the 
time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife, notice this word, S-H-A-L-L, that's guaranteed. God said, Sarah shall, not may, not will, but shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. And now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age and ceased to be with Sarah after the man of woman. This was a miracle. God performs miracles. God still the miracle working business today. The God see, now listen, I'm not saying everything you are is God for you to get. Because you don't get everything what we want. Even from our earthly parents. Growing up, we didn't have chocolate chip cookies and ice cream and all the We had ice cream and ice cream. They were for the meat. You had to afford that. But every now and again, we used to get a little bit of ice cream and get a, a little cookie. But we had some, uh, some they didn't call them biscuits, but we had some um, um, cookies that we called whips. Remember whips? Tastes cheesy. Man, I love this. Mommy used to buy a box of whips. I guess what she didn't give each one of them. So 
supposed to be here. But he's here, and he's a pawn in Israel. side. He is Isaac's brother. By the same time, he's a God gave his promise repeatedly to Abraham. Genesis chapter 17. Abraham laughed. The joy when God told him of the glory of promise of hope of having a son. But this time he promised this is repeated so that Sarah could hear. And in her heart she laughed. He My dear beloved, this episode is a reminder that God knows everything there is to know about you and me. He knows our motives, our secrets to sin. All things that we do, nothing is hidden from his eyes according to the book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 13. He says, neither is there any creature that is not manifested in his sight. But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him to whom we have to do. God sees all, he knows all secretly. Was on uh, 16 to 21 of, the, of, of uh, Genesis 18. Uh, as I say, God shared with Abraham the message about the city. Let me tell you something. God will bring things to your thoughts and to my thoughts. God will show things in the Word of God that we need to know. Sometimes we read the scripture for months and years and time, and then we don't understand certain things, and God will have it to be revealed to you. Here, yeah, God has, is about to do a work uh, that, that will be remembered for the rest of our lives, and, and today we still remember. Son of Agamara, hear what God says in verse 16 to 21. And the men rose up from men, and then after they get to eating, the angel of the Lord, uh, the, uh, 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 there the Abraham said, I looked towards Sodom, and Abraham went with them. He went them on the way. As a matter of fact, I believe mean, Abraham was walking with them, saying, As they get to where they're going, not, he's not going down to Sodom, but he's taking them, you know, so far. And then he would say to them, I will see you all in the future. But nevertheless, he said in verse 17, And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? They are leaving now, they are going they, 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 they just didn't come there to tell Abraham that he's going to have a son. They are about to invoke judgment on a wicked city. Verse 17, seeing that Abraham should surely become a great and mighty nation. Not a great and mighty man, nation. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Verse number 19. For I know him that he will command his children, not child, children, and his household after him, after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he had spoken of him. God is going to keep his word, Abraham. In verse 20, and the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin. Is very grievous. I will do. Uh, I will go down now and see whether they have done all together according to the cry of it, which is come unto me. And if not, I will know. <clears throat> this is a great point, a precious point in Abraham's relationship with the Lord. Three times, because of who he is and how he has conducted himself. Future of his life, God said, You know something? I'm going to keep it to you. Yes, the things that God will allow you and I to enjoy in this life because of how we serve Him. I was talking to someone here recently, and they were asking me, they asked me some questions that relates to, you know, why I am the way I am. And I said, Well, you know, I believe the only thing I can. Um, uh, directly to, I said, when my father will be dying, I told my wife, I said, I'm going to Nassau, I'm going to um, uh, spend the day with that event. Uh, you know, so, uh, so I went to Nassau and I sat down in the doctor's hospital as he lay dying, and you know, I sat there, I just did my, I was glad that the mom was there, I think it was around 3 o'clock in the morning, I was going to Nassau around the 8 to 35, 8 45. Uh, I was going to the hospital at around 9.30, and I was there until the rest of my siblings did not go from work. I spent the whole day with him, and one of the things he said to me uh, through that day, he said, son, God will never bless you. Now, some people don't believe in the blessing of dying of people, but I really believe he blessed me on the dying day. He died about two weeks later. He said, his son said, God will never bless you. So I said, there's nothing that I have done. But then he, he, he 
before he said that to me. And he's all about he's all about marriage things. But he said, he said, he said, you know, he said, he said, he said, son, don't even spoil. Son, never be so clean. Never even play with you for your own. You know, I've never said that before. My mom, I've never said that before. Never. In fact, when I was growing up, food was a curse. Life was a curse. Free adventure, there shall be twenty 
found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for twenty sake. And he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry. Boy, he really thought he was going to do something. You know, I, 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 I'm really pushing the answer. I'm pushing the answer. Mm. This is what Abraham is thinking. He is thinking as a man. He said, and I will speak yet but this once. The adventure ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten sake. This is where Abraham paused. This is where Abraham stopped. And the Lord made his way. As soon as he had left the meeting with Abraham, Abraham returned unto his way. All who belong to Jehovah and Jehovah, these men are under the orders of God in the world. The first thing you will do is not tell you. He's speaking on his way. He spoke the Bible on his end that men are always to pray and not to pray. All who belong to Pray without ceasing. Don't stop agonizing. Don't stop begging God. Don't stop asking. You see, don't listen. Don't ever quit. I remember what Abraham was bitter, but Abraham knew he had begged for mercy to an extent, and he stopped. You see, Abraham got to the place where he, he, he ceased. Too many Sodomas have been, uh, 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 too many Sodomas have been a place of success. Too many Sodomas have been a place of uh, the grossest sin. Too many Sodomas have been a place of wickedness, extensive wickedness. You probably drive about having a being revealed after. The war in Genesis chapter 14, you remember when the four king, king of one son, Lot was taken a prisoner. The, 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 uh, uh, one king name was Amramthia, king of, uh, of Shinar. The other was, was, was Rico, king of Elysia. Uh, the other was Jedal the Mir, king of Elam, and Tyler, king of nations. These were the kings that came against Sodom. And there were uh, Abraham, uh, my nephew Lot, is there, and they took him and his wife and his children, and they carried them, and Abraham had to go on and rescue them. This was always a wicked city, however, to uh, my, uh, my, listen, to many, we sometimes get to the place where we say, I can't do it no more. Abraham, the servant of God, Abraham, the saint of God, Abraham, the son of God, listen, Abraham was a man. Of faith. This was a war where a lot of family was taken captive. Those of us who know the Bible know what the word of God says. We know what he needs to do. Let us do it. Abraham to the air and said, Will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Don't give up, no suffering in that hour. Don't stop praying for your neighbor. Don't stop praying for uh, our country. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15 to 16 says, For I have to say for me, have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help. For a time of need, there is a time of need. See the conversation between Abraham and God. Abraham begged. He interceded. He got to the place where he, uh, he interceded until he quit. You see, Abraham prayed to the Lord, rising out of several burdens he carried because of the revelation. First, he was concerned about God's reputation, he was concerned about his cousin. His nephew. Secondly, he is thinking about Lot, his family, who live in Sodom. You see, he didn't want to anger God. Therefore, he said, Don't get angry with me. He didn't want Lot to die. He said, If there be ten in this city, there was not ten. He could not find ten. So, he begins to talk to God about the situation 